The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 26th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you got a question but you can't dial in, send me an email. Send that out to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading the upside. Nearly all the sectors in the S&P 500, the energy sector down about 36 cents. Dow's up 313. S&P's up 44. NASDAQ 100, 259. Russell's up 12. Semi's up 141. Trendy's up 36. Gold is off three bucks, while silver's up 36 cents. Trading out at 23.15. Lights recruit is up 44 pennies. It's nearly $72 is the print there. Natural gas down nine cents to 30 year treasury. Printed out at 125.04. And I'll leave the chart. Dollar wise, the upside, you got booking holdings, 59 bucks, two and a quarter percent. Broadcom, 6% or 42 bucks. Monolithic Power, 35 bucks, 7%. Mercado Libre, 35 bucks, 2.7%. Equinex, 23 bucks, 3.3%. We got some movers and we've got some shakers. Shaking those trees, Alta Beauty down nearly 56 bucks or nearly 12%. Restoration Hardware, nearly $10 to the downside, almost 4%. O'Reilly Automotive down five bucks, a half a percent. Land Theus Holdings off six bucks. That's a six percent move to the downside, and Biotech is off uh, three percent. That's three dollars and sixty cent move. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So, what do you want to look at? Well, why don't we first just start with uh, let's take a look at market breath. Has that cleared up for us? Let's find out. Let's open up our dialog box. Well, these are settings here for the uh, sectors with inside the S&P 500. Let's look at the general markets. Let's look at the S&P 500. Boy, this is a this is a uh, real stinker out here. Talk about a false move to the upside, and it's a big one. For, uh, let me just let me just update this. Let me just well, we did just update it. Whew. It's like I cannot believe my eyes, but I am believing my eyes. If we take a look at the S&P 500 right now, right here at 11.09 in the morning, our speed dials, these speed dials, when you're setting red, that tells we have more instruments trading below profile than those trading above profile. And there's one thing I can guarantee you. Mark may be breaking out, but that is not a breakout message. That is not a breakout message. You would not expect to see this. I did not expect to see this. I was just at the doctor's office, just got back, got great, great reviews. I'll share maybe that stuff with you as well. Uh, you have now taken off now 35 pounds in just over eight weeks uh, time. It'd be amazed what that does to your uh, health system out there. But anyway, back to this here, these speed dials all in the bearish zone out there. Hmm, something to think about. We take a look at the NASDAQ. 
we're slightly bearish in the daily time frame. The 16240 are bullish. On the daily time frame, we are at 31 above and 38 below. So it's a little bit more than slightly bearish out there. So really interesting markets out here. Okay, Stevie didn't expect to see that with regard to this rally out there, but it is what it is. So now let's try to take and figure out what these markets are doing. So when we take a look at the equity futures out here, we've got the ES mini that still has a sell the D point pattern. That sell the D point pattern formed right here with this bearish engulfing candle. That was on the trading session of May 23rd. That says that its high is the real resistance area out here. So let's, um, well, you guys saw, yeah, let's give me a second here. Let me, uh, I don't want a blue arrow. I want it just a yellow, a yellow line, white line, yellow line. There we go. So let's put the uh, let's put so that mark out there. The heck! Oh, I know what I was doing. There we go. Sorry about that. All right. So here is the the line of demarcation, so to speak. Forty two twenty two seventy five. If price closes above that, then we don't have a topping pattern, and it would suggest to move up to forty three sixteen. The NQ, you can see the A to B equals CD pattern out here. Let's just simply expand this out. This formed a Rhodes Mintum in a TD nine count top, a Wave G top. It had everything, every kind of top you could want. But it's taken those tops out. And that was at the 13,979.25 level. Now, what I will say is it will take those out if, in fact, we get a close above 13,979.25. Yesterday, it looked like at settlement, we were closing above this level. But by the time I got to my computer this morning, we were back down below. We closed last night at 13,976.50, so just slightly below that. But you can see here that pattern appears to be negated. And the next price projection area would get us up to about the 14,591 area. No other topping patterns. There is a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that is still triggered, but that would require a, a bearish reversal candle to confirm that signal. Now, we have a new profile that's attempting to form inside of the Dow Equity Future contract. Here you can see the A to B equals CD. You should also notice that yesterday was a bullish hammer candle. Now, the question is, and this is one I can't really a answer for you necessarily. Uh, it is a question in my mind. How close do you have to get to the one-to-one -one price projection? where you don't get down to it, where it qualifies. So yesterday's low out here, and I don't know the answer. Yesterday's low is 32,619. The one-to-one -one price projection, 32,495. So, you know, that's over 100 points. Is that close enough on a 34,000 priced instrument? Maybe it is. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know out there. Well, but what we do have, this is what I do know, there is a new profile that's attempting to form. And the support level there is at 32,730, and the resistance level is up at 33,397 and 33,619. In the case of the Russell 2000, we've got this nice consolidation pattern that's been traveling in, and it did find support at the bottom of its bullish structured profile. So it has new support with inside this consolidation pattern. That new support is at 17,5650, and the resistance level is at 1798. 850 as well. So that's what we see when we take a look at these charts. Let's uh, swip, flip over to the uh, white background charts. I'll show you those. We'll stay with the same time period, the daily time period for those equity future contracts. So you see no, no other patterns other than that sell the D point pattern here for the ES mini. No other patterns, no wave counts, no anything out here for the uh, NQ other than if we do get a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm uh, again, a, a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern here on the Dow. You see yesterday's bullet. So in the case of the Dow, that, that new with that new profile forming, if the Dow equity future contract was able to close above 33,245, let's call it, and that's an estimation, could be 246 or 247, then that would suggest to move up to that 33,397 to 33,619 area. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll get back from this uh, break. We're going to take a look at Pfizer for Alton, the spies for Dennis, and the SMHs for Mr. Bill. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar, yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's get to our first request out here coming from Alton. You want to take a look at that ticker symbol PFE, that is Pfizer. Let's actually read the question out here. So uh, it goes like this. Uh, hope you're well. I am. Thank you. If you have time, take a look at Pfizer. You've been in a stock. I have been having this stock on your radar for a long time. It has pulled back the levels that I'm interested in. What do you think? And what are support and resistance levels on daily weekly charts? Thanks so much. Have a beautiful memorial trip. Thank you. We'll do that. So with regard to your support level, there's a new profile that is formed with Inside Pfizer. And this new profile is, uh, is, is wrapped around the prior profile. So the first message there, Alton, is to, expect in to, is to expect a continuation of a consolidation pattern. That is its message right now. It did form a nice momentum indicator bottom out here that uh, confirmed on May the 19th. Price ran up to where it did. I'm not sure exactly why it stopped there just yet. We haven't investigated that. But your specific questions were about support and resistance. So your first level of resistance on a daily time frame is 39.35. Your first level of support is 37.45 or thereabouts. That is the oscillator and change line. Your next levels of support on the daily are between 36.57 and 36.96. It is a bullish structured profile. What do I think about you taking a long position here? Let's continue to look at Pfizer. On a weekly time frame, I do not see any kind of a bottom signal. I see price that has been thrown back by its red oscillator and change line. Therefore, Alton, I'm going to suggest right now that you uh, you keep this on your list, but you don't take a position here. If we take a look at the monthly time frame, it's gunning for at least the 3576 area out there. Um, so we don't have a bottom signal. We, I mean, we do have a bottom pattern on the daily time frame, but that was, you know, uh, a week, a week, a week ago plus out here, and price is within inside that profile. So I'd wait for at least 37.44, or preferably between 36.57 and 36.96, with price pulling back and generating more than 20, less than 27 million shares, the swing point value from back on May the 18th. Um, what 
else do we want to look at inside of uh, Pfizer? Boy, that monthly uh, TD9 count most certainly worked uh, there. That uh, formed on December of 2021. So, um, this has an A to B equals CD down on a monthly basis. So let's take a look at that. So the swing point was from October 2022, 466 million shares. It was passed with 403, 504. So you actually have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside on a monthly basis inside of Pfizer. So let's try to get a feel for where that could take you to, Alton. And that might be really what you're really looking at out here. And... Uh, Okay, so now we've got that, and that's that's below this 35.76, that uh, TD9 count breakout level. So I'm going to suggest that you be patient here with regard to Pfizer. Prices along the left side of that C to D leg out there, and that's telling us that the move down right now is stronger than that move in the A to B leg. So I'd be very patient when it comes to uh, Pfizer out there. And Alton, I do hope that that helps you out, and thanks for your well wishes. Dennis wants to know where the SPY is headed to over the next couple of weeks. That's a great question, Dennis, and I don't have the answer to that. But thanks for asking. I do appreciate that. Now, let's just try to look at the SPY charts and try to get a feel for what they're communicating to us. So when we take a look at potential patterns out here in the case of the SPY, uh, we basically have uh, no top. Is that? Uh, yeah. We have no topping pattern in place for the SPY price above green oscillator and change line. Above the top of its profile, those signals are bullish. We're going to end the week today. And if the SPY closes above the top of its profile, 418.31, we're above it right now, you'll have two consecutive weeks above that profile level. That would be a bullish message. So where's the A to B equals CD pattern on the SPY out here? Well, the A to B, let's draw that in here. We're looking at the weekly time frame. Let's just simply, eh, let's cut and paste. Let's cut, paste, and assemble. Copy, paste. Now let's go assemble this. So here, there's an A to B equals CD that gets you up past 435. It gets you up to about 437 or so. Now, that B point did volume of uh, 544 million. First time up, 458. This time up, 370, 330, 424. 440. So we're up over this thing with light volume. Does that mean that it can't go on to complete that full extension? It does not mean that at all, Dennis. And you're above resistance levels. You're above, you tested this week, you tested and rejected that oscillator and change line. That's a bullish signal. All right. So where's it headed to? We finally got to it. And where it's headed to is 423.82 or thereabouts. That is the monthly oscillator and change line. That is the next level of resistance, assuming that we don't get a give back of all the of all price and falls back down below the top of the profile. So I've given you the profile levels to watch at day's end. So assuming that those levels succeed, they hold, then what we're looking at is move up to that monthly oscillator and change line. If price closes above that, the signal would be to move up to 468.20 out there. Now, with regard to SPY, you know, our good friend David White, he taught us that, uh, you know, as you're coming into a holiday, you usually see a change in trend after the holiday. Well, turns out that as we take a look at the uh, SPY out here, this is going to be day number two of consecutive moves higher. So we took a look at that market breadth. We know the market breadth is bearish across the board for the S&P. Bearish in the daily and weekly for the NQ out here. Let's not get too tied into these breakouts that we've got going on right here. You're going to get just your typical knee-jerk reaction move to the upside. Wouldn't be surprised to see price pull back on a Tuesday. By the way, I, I leave for vacation tomorrow. I will. Uh, I'm going to make the best effort uh, to possibly uh, broadcast a show on Wednesday. So we're off on Monday with the holiday. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm traveling. I'm flying on uh, the following day on Tuesday, so I can't do a show then. But I'm going to try to do a show from Santorini on both Wednesday and uh, Thursday of uh, next week. Friday, I won't be able to do a show because of, of, uh, of airtime out there. But that's that's a, so that's a, that's a next week's schedule. But uh, with regard to the uh, spy out there, Dennis, um, at this stage here, watch those profile levels. If price closes over them, 423.80. And if you get above that, it says it wants to continue to move higher. So I hope that helps you out. And Mr. Bill wants to take a look at the SMHs out here. What Mr. Bill knows and what Dennis knows is this market is no way is this going to top until at least we get a top inside the semiconductor index. Well, turns out right now on a monthly basis, the resistance level, Mr. Bill, that price is dealing with is a monthly TD9 count breakdown area. That's at 145.18, we're at 145 and a quarter. If we do close above that, that would be a bullish signal to you and I. And that would be that would suggest to you and I that we retest the recent highs or, or its all-time highs. 
out here. And that occurred back on November of 2021, and those highs being 159.41. You are already inside that swing point on a monthly basis. That swing point has volume of 170 million shares. So far this month, what we've done in the SMH is 125 million shares. So a little light in the loafers, doesn't matter. You're inside that swing point. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. We have no topping signal whatsoever. I mean none. All we have are a couple of different A to B equals CD patterns that we can draw in here. No real reason to draw those. We know the A to B equals CD patterns exist. And therefore, if we did get a bearish reversal candle on the daily time frame, that would then confirm a uh, sell the D point pattern, a Gartley sell pattern. But when we take a look at the daily time frame out here for the SMHs, there ain't no top in place. There's no topping signal. None. We're in bar number two of a TD9 count. The SMHs are not stretched. There is no road momentum indicator that has been triggered out here. So the SMHs are looking very, very, did I say very? I meant very bullish out there. So Mr. Bill, I hope that helps you out. We get back to this break, we're gonna take a look at SMCI from a guppy. And I would love to look at others as well. Steve at TFNN.com, 877-927-6648, or any ping inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So we take a look at those SMHs. I've got the A to B equals CD pattern. I've just drawn that in on the uh, weekly time frame chart. So you can see those that are underway. As far as a next price projection uh, level, uh, 152.97 would be the uh, target out there. Uh, but we already talked about how this is likely going to go target its all-time high back at that November swing point up at the 159. 41 ish uh, level. So it looks like that's where the SMHs are headed to, short of a uh, bearish reversal candle. Let's go to our next request. This is coming in from a guppy who says uh, SMCI has had one heck of a move. Let's switch over to take a look at those charts on the white background screen. Give me a moment here. We'll switch over. We'll take a look at those. And uh, um, that is, it uh, looks like it's getting ready to stall out here. So you'll see momentarily why Stevie said that. So here, SMCI. And SMCI is. Is, is you could type in the right symbol, you could find out, Stevie. All right, what do we got? That is the super microcomputer. Yeah, so this thing has really taken off the upside. So, um, McGuppy, today is going to become, is going to complete a TD9 count top. So what should happen, not a guarantee, what should happen is price should now pull back to its oscillator and change line. We can see that's printing out currently at 176.73 with the top of the profile 171.67. So that's what it should do. Now, whatever today's high is, the current high today, don't know if that will be the day's high, but the current high is 227.71. Let's say that is today's high. If price closes above that on Tuesday of next week, well, then you have a very strong upward momentum move that is in place out here, and it's headed higher. Now, headed higher to where? Great question. It, there's, there's no resistance out here. It's up above weekly profiles, monthly profiles. Yeah, I'm going to check on my other system. It's probably up above quarterly profiles. Let me just check. Yeah, it's up above everything out there. So where's this thing headed to? Uh, great question. No idea. Really, no, no, no idea at all. It's at new all-time highs. So just be careful of the TD9 count top out there. Now, one reason to be careful. Remember, when we get a topping signal on a larger time frame, we should see the smaller time frames, not all of them, sometimes all of them, but not all of them, uh, generate topping signals. That's kind of our cue. That's how the multiple time frames work together and how we piece them together. So we take a look at a 30-minute time frame out here. That's one of our intraday time periods that we look. We can see we've got a TD9 count and what might be a Rhodes momentum indicator uh, top out here. Now, it's only two minutes into the current bar. So... Uh, uh, I think we are. Yeah. And so uh, this is a 30 minute chart. So this this chart won't complete until 12 noon. So watch the 21881 ish area. If price gets below that, you could get a pullback all the way back to where it broke out from. And that's at 20447. So SMCI looks uh, muy bueno, but you do have that TD9 count top. And uh, you'll have to wait till Monday to see if, in fact, that really does take um, uh, take effect out there. So, uh, McGuppy, uh, best of luck to you uh, there. The next request from Ron wants to take a look at Boyle. So to look at Boyle, let's do this. Let's pull up the uh, natural gas chart and Boyle and UNG, and we can do all of that at one time if I hit the right button. Can Stevie hit the right button? We're going to find out. I think I hit the right button out here. And so Ron's question was, um, hi, Steve Boyle, I'm long. Would like to hear your thoughts on the long side of this name out here. So Boyle is basically traded off of the UNG. And the UNG right now is exclusively, exclusively contains the July contract. And what we have up here, the July natural gas contract, that is, what we have up here at the top is the weekly time frame. What we have at the bottom on the left is the daily time frame. So, um, actually, I'm going to show this to you on the black background chart. So then we'll come back here. We'll, we'll flip it back and forth. But so I don't lose my thought, which is very easy for me to do. Um, going to come here. I think the market update will do this. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So now, Ron, the first thing to notice here when we take a look at um, natural gas is we have a new profile that formed. Let me turn off price because you'll see it. Without me turning off price, you won't really see it. The new profile, it turns out, the bottom is above the prior bottom. The high, just by the hair of its chinny chin chin, is above the prior high. So this is telling us about a change in trend, a likely change in trend. Look, we had a we didn't we, we had a similar signal back here, back in the March uh, time frame. You know, and if I turn price back on there, um, you know, it 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 really never closed above the top of that uh, profile. When it closed below the bottom of it, obviously led to lower price. So 
what what the charts, what the what the profile is communicating to us is that we do have a change in trend signal. That change in trend signal will get voided if we see a close below two dollars and thirty six, two point three six one. That doesn't mean that uh, to to exit your position in Boyle necessarily. We're going to flip back to the other charts to tell you why. But I want to make sure that you could clearly see what's taking place with regard to the profile. And again, exactly which level you're going to be watching or what levels you're going to be watching uh, to the uh, downside. Now let's go flip over to those white background charts. And the white background charts are going to show us that if, in fact, price did go on the July contract, closes below that 2.361, then the next area of support will be $2.31. Your real level of support out here is the TD9 count bottom. So with regard to Boyle, the true support for Boyle exists with natural gas at the price point of 2.233 out here. But would you want to hold on to Boyle during that time period? Perhaps not. So, but you've got to watch. You know, the, the numbers are so close to each other. It's 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 it's, a, it's it's slightly difficult to 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 trade out here. But at this stage, you had a TD nine count bottom, TD nine count top. Price is pulling back. Just supposed to test support. That TD nine count bottom took out resistance. So it's, it's signaling to an eye that it's intent. It really wants to move to the upside. That's what it would like to do. The weekly time frame has that uh, TD nine count bottom pattern as well. Now here, what we don't like is prices below that red oscillator and change line. Don't know where we'll end the, uh, the the day, but if it does close below that, well, that threatens to move down to test that low at 2.233. But we've got these other areas of support out here. So it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Your question specifically was, uh, hear your thoughts on the long side of this name. The long side still looks good, and it will remain looking good, quite frankly, until those bottoms get taken out. So that's what we see when we take a look at uh, UNG, Boyle, and uh, natural gas. So, Ron, thanks much for writing in and hope that helps you out. Now, I don't see any other questions either in the den um, or let me check by email. I take that back. We've got one here from Greg. Greg, thanks for saving me. Greg M. writes in. He wants to take a look at AI. It's like everybody wants to take a look at AI out there. You know what Stevie likes to look at? RI, real intelligence. Who wants to look at artificial intelligence? What's all the hype out there? Artificial intelligence is a program by real intelligence, isn't it? In any event out here, let's go take a look at AI, though. That's just a Stevie uh, soapbox thing. Uh, but let's get off of that. Let me close out these uh, natural gas charts out here. Let's go take a look at AI and help Greg figure out what it's doing or where it's headed to or whether it's got a top or a bottom or nothing. So we pull up these charts here for AI. What we see is that today is going to become bar number eight. What we know about bar number eight is that 90% uh, of the time when you have a successful bar number eight, and we do at this stage here, it'll go on to form a TD nine count. In this case here, it'll become a TD nine count top. This says that AI should form a top between today and Wednesday of next week. We'll finish looking at artificial intelligence, but we'll do it with real intelligence as soon as we get back from this break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 310, S&P 46, NASDAQ 100, 299, the Russell's up 10. We're we'll taking a look at AI out here. This is for Greg M. And so what we can see out here is that uh, you've got bar number eight that's going to form. This should form a TD9 count top between today and uh, Wednesday of next week. More likely than not, uh, price is going to go on and at least tag the uh, swing point out here that created or generated that momentum indicator top. We also have a wave number seven top out there. And uh, so that uh, swing point, the bottom of that swing point is 32.23. The volume on that swing point is only 49 million shares. Now I say only 49, today in two hours of trading, we've done 22 million shares. So price is moving into that swing point with volume, which is the reason, Greg, that I, it looks to me like it's going to go ahead and at least tag that level. Yes, it is in wave number D of the Chapman wave, which you pointed out, but that hasn't been confirmed just yet, meaning this can extend itself. And it looks to me like it may extend itself out there. We're above resistance on the uh, weekly. Uh, there's nothing really to assist us on the uh, monthly out here. So it does look like this heads higher, forms some kind of a uh, top between, uh, again, I'd say it's more likely between Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, but it could form a top here today with bar number eight. On an intraday time period, uh, AI also has a TD9 count eight bar. So this should go on to complete a TD9 count top by 1230. So between now and 1230, we should see AI begin to pull back. Where would it pull back to should it do that? Well, at this stage here, you'd have to say the top of its profile. And that's at the 2964 area. So AI should form a TD9 count top. It should do that. It's either done it now or will be doing it between now and 1230 this afternoon. So that's something else for you to uh, keep an eye on out there, Greg, with regard to AI. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in out there. And uh, the next request coming in from McGuppy wants to take a look at the GDX. So let's throw those charts up here. And let me read the question. It says, could you look at gold and the GDX? Would you consider April to mid-May as a consolidation and yesterday completing the measured move? April to May. So I think we're dealing with this. So, so what, what uh, McGuppy is asking about here, we'll just draw it in. April to May. So let me see. Where is April? May. So, you know, so what? I guess what I would do, this is probably what you have drawn in here. So let's draw it in, or this is at least what Stevie would draw in here. So let's just do what, what would Stevie identify as the likely consolidation? 
It, it's probably something like that. And now we can just move that. You're asking, does this qualify as a completed measured move? Remember, when you break through a consolidation, you typically do a pattern that is equal to or greater than McGuppy. Greater than. But your question was, um, does this complete the measured move? It completes at least the minimum portion of the measured move out there. So, yes, uh, good spotting. What we can see here as well is there is an A to B equal CD to the downside. Now, this is more than a one-to-one. -one. We're beyond the 1 to 1.272. So A to B would look like this, and C to D, uh, the one-to-one -one would look like that. You can see we're well beyond that. So we've got the A to B equal CD pattern. What you're really waiting for here, McGuppy, and I know you're looking to get into some type of a long position out here, you'd really prefer to get a bullish reversal candle. If you get that, then you have a completed by the D point. Because we don't have a completed up by the D point, and because price is trading below its breakout level, which was 30.74, it really opens up the door for a move to 28.34. So that's the daily time frame for the GDX. What do we see on the weekly time frame? We don't see anything good there. Price is below the bottom of its bullish structure profile. This will be a second consecutive week. This actually says the GDX can get a 22.58. I'm not saying that's what it's going to do. I'm saying that's what the charts are saying. However, the monthly chart says, you know, Stevie, I'll buy into that idea. That is if I close below my oscillator and change line. And that level right now is at 30.36. We're trading at 30.32. Really what um, what the GDX would need to do to really suggest those lower prices that we could see out there, McGuppy, is close below 29.56. 29.56 is the top of its daily profile. Gets back inside there, well, then anything can happen. So on the daily time frame, you are exactly right. It did complete its measured move, but that's not your buy signal. You're waiting for a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern out there. So I do hope that that helps you out. And um, thanks so much for the request. Jambalaya writes in and says, Mr. Rhodes, that would be my father. What do the charts say for XLF? And go cracking. Look, I, uh, is that you say? Show crack, show cron, show cron. Hmm. In any event, let's take a look at the XLF. What, so what the XLF did yesterday was it tested rejected a swing point on lighter volume. So here's the swing point out here, Jambalaya. You probably noticed that, but if not, let me just share that with you. Here's the swing, or did it close inside there? No, it rejected it. So here's the swing point. Uh, we're talking about May 4th. Volume there, 76 million shares, high 31.85. Yesterday, what was the close? The close was at 31.96, and it tested it, and it did it on 41 million shares. That was 41 testing 76. What is that telling you, Jambalaya? Tom has told us this many times, so it's ingrained into our minds. There aren't enough sellers to push this thing any lower. But the buyers right now, okay, they've taken their stab at it, and not until they close above that red oscillator and change line do they want to then take on the sellers that reside at 32.65. Used to be buyers there. Those buyers have turned into sellers. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, you just have a consolidation between 31.06 and 33.08. You've got support at uh, 31.50 on the uh, monthly time frame. That area has held. So it's really going to be all about the daily time frame. We've tested you, reject that swing point. Now you've run into resistance. If you don't clear, clear that resistance level, maybe you get back and you test that swing point again. If you do, Clear that resistance level. And again, that resistance area at 3204, you will likely head up to 3265. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Jambalaya. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, Mr. Rhodes, that would be my father. Yep. Um, Steve O. And I was thinking, I, you know, I probably should get a Steve O at tfnn.com too. So often I want to say that. When I'm saying, you know, you can send me an email at steve at tfn.com. My mind's saying one thing. My, I'm catching it, though, saying the other thing. But in any event, this is from Dan. He wants to take a look at SVRA. So let's pull that up on our screen out here and take a look at it. SVRA. SVRA. And uh, that is uh, Savara Inc. And it's trading right now at about $2.65. So it did form that TD9 count top out there, Dan. And uh, right now, we just have price trading with inside this profile. What we do know is that uh, you can see that's bullish structured profile area. So your strong support is between 240 and 248, but 248 has already been tested and is held. So now I'd say the consolidation is running between 248 and 272. If you did close above, not you, but obviously this stock, if SVRA, Savara Inc., closes above 
the price point of 274 well then you're off to the races now off to the races may simply just get us back to our prior highs the prior highs occurred during the month of february 17 2023 there's 1.6 million shares that traded hands that week this week, we are at 1.9. You're pushing into that swing point with volume. Dano, Tom has taught us that if you close inside a swing point with volume, odds favor you're going to go test that high. So where is SBRA headed to? It's headed to that high. And that high out there was from February, and that's at the 285 level. If it's going to get to 285, it'll take out 274. Well, if it closes above 274, that is. So that's really the area to be watching with regard to Savara, Inc. Dano. I hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So McGuppy had also asked us to take a look at the gold out there. What I've put up on my charts here are the uh, so some levels for you guys to be paying attention to, especially uh, next week, well, even today. Uh, and these are the uh, Apogee uh, pivot points out there that we're showing you. So Apogee, that is where the moon is uh, furthest from Earth during the uh, current lunar cycle. That occurred last night, 8-something in the evening. I don't remember the exact time. But it's, uh, the price points are noted on my screens out here. So these are the levels to be watching, which are 41.52.75 for the ES Mini. 
13957.75 for the NQ. And gold, we can see price have been testing that Apogee pivot point of 1940.10. If price were to close below that, that suggests lower price. Now, we can see a 30 minute bullish hammer candle out here uh, that took place at 8.30 last, uh, 8 uh, last night. And that level is 1936. You want to watch that. There's a TD9 count bottom that formed out here. This pattern is going to complete as we go off the air at 12 noon. So you'll want to watch that low of 1938.50 as well. Price should at least bounce on a 30-minute basis. Price should at least bounce up to to where? To about 1946.80, 1947.90 is the area that I'd watch. And uh, 71.91 for light sweep crude is the Apogee pivot points. If price closes below that, that suggests at least short term lower price out there here when we take a look at the goldilocks charts you'll see the td9 count pattern on the 30 minute forming at the uh, td9 count breakout level so price should go target that oscillator and change line here's what i really want to show you is that we do have closes now what might be two consecutive closes really below the bottom of its consolidation we just took a look at a measured move out there inside the gdx well this is another reason to be cautious about the gdx we might get a measured move inside of gold down to the 1847 level. To close out the show, before Stevie takes off, we're going to take a look at Amazon. AMZN is a ticker symbol out there. We're going to try to find it. Where did Stevie put it? This is for SNP. Amazon, no top in place on the daily. It is negating. It's TD9 count on the weekly. It'll do that if we get a close today above 11860. And if we get that SNP, where's price headed to? 133.54 is the number. So, folks, thanks so much for joining us. Stay tuned for great programming. I'm going to do the best I can to do as many shows uh, while I am gone. Uh, right now, we're targeting next Wednesday and Thursday. So have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the holiday. Be safe out there. And we'll look forward to speaking with you again soon. Take care now.